welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the 111th episode of The Simple Sophisticate. Today, I am so excited to introduce to you a good friend of mine, but also a talented person in her own right in everything that she does, especially knowing how to style a wardrobe. Her name is Tiffany Rogers, and we've been friends since I began blogging. And with her life alive and vibrant in New York City, she's going to join us today to talk about not just fashion, but style and how to live with your style, how to pinpoint how to find it. In fact, if you're someone who lives in the New York area, you could possibly hire her to be your stylist, as I have sent many readers to look her up. Second of all, we are going to talk about life. We're going to talk about life balance, how to handle the busy. She is an entrepreneur with a successful styling business in New York City. She inspires me, and I'm so excited she agreed to join us today on The Simple Sophisticate. But before I get to the interview, don't fret. We do have a petite plaisir, and it's inspired from something that is talked about in today's episode. So be sure to stay tuned. And now, without further ado, here is my interview with Tiffany Rogers of Style by Tiffany. Today's episode, I am so excited to welcome to the show Tiffany Rogers of Style by Tiffany. Welcome. Hi, Shannon. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining me. And and for all my listeners out there, Tiffany Rogers is a stylist based in New York City, and she does your shopping for personal shopping, capsule wardrobe shopping, as well as bridal attire. And I have known, I'm trying to think, we met, I think, right when I started blogging. That's over six years ago, almost seven years ago. Does that sound about right? Yeah. I would even say like, I feel like 2008. I, it's I think it's when I start. Yeah, so like almost eight years ago. It's, I was going to say you have always been my New York City know where to go, <laughs> what to do, and you kind of helped me learn a little bit of the tidbits about New York Fashion Week as well because you have been to some of the shows. You also know how the game works over there. But yeah, you are a stylist <laughs> yeah. in New York City, and I am so excited to have you on the show. So, oh, I'm excited to be here. <laughs> what what we got to obviously talk about style, um, but we're going to talk about a lot of different things today. And let's just start with the whole concept of styling in New York City. What is that business like? What has been your experience? When do people reach out to you? What are they looking for? Okay, well, it's been really, it's interesting because had you asked me when I moved here 12 years ago, if this is what I'd be doing, I would be like, absolutely not. Um so yeah, I mo- I actually moved to New York to pursue my dance career. I was like, you know, like everybody else, like I'm going to be on Broadway. <laughs> hey, <you never> know. <laughs> but it was so funny. So I'm more of a dancer, not a okay. singer. And I got, you know, the wake up call that if you want to dance on Broadway, you also have to sing. Oh. <laughs> but at the, yeah, but it's so <laughs> funny how life is so full circle because my friends and family, they've always known like my love for fashion and just, you know, my, I, and they've always been like, why don't you do fashion? Why don't you? And I'm like, I, I always thought that fashion was either you work at a magazine or you design clothes. Right. I'm like, no, I just like putting it together. And then lo and behold, I'm in New York city. I had started my blog at the time, accidental chic. And that's kind of when things just like took off, right? We were being invited to fashion week. We we're doing, and I was just exposed to a whole other world. And I was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> There's a lot going I, on. I, yeah. yeah. And people really do pay for the services. So it's, so I started my company started by Tiffany five, almost five years ago. Isn't that crazy? That's, it's time I, flies. Yeah. You've been, that's five years. I, wow. Already. Wow. I know. And you were there. You've been there since the beginning. Shit. <laughs> Hey, I'm a fan. I've I've tried to send people your way too because you are. You have. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't do the in person styling, and I, that that is, I think, 
more personalized and so people feel that you really see them because you're right in front of them and that if they can have that i think that's ideal that's what i would love to have so but yeah most people now i mean the power of google i feel like you know if anybody wants anything what do you do you go to google Google so i get a lot of you know google searches um i also now since it's been five years i get a lot of word of mouth which is great ak through you is one of them (laughs) but um yeah so that's basically how it started it's amazing the range the d- diverse clients i get and it's really like a lot of people are like oh so you're a stylist like they think i'm doing these like glamorous celebrities and whatnot i'm like no actually it's real women who want to look their best who are smart savvy just want to you know invest in looking their best so they're going to hire someone who knows what they're doing and we have a lot of fun so and it's very it's very rewarding too because I get I mean I think the best part is after working with a client like a week later or like a couple days later I'll get like an email like had so much fun thank you so much I had one client send me this a text that's like thank you for making me feel beautiful and I'm like oh, like that's that's you know as as frivolous sometimes as it sounds what I do to like other people. <laughs> No, there, it's, it's just it's like no it it pays off <laughs> i was gonna say in many ways you will not in many ways you are you're empowering them and your expertise is something worth investing in because as you said these are women who are professionals in their career they have probably very busy schedules and so they're investing in someone who knows what they're doing so they don't have to worry about it do you find that women one know what they want or are or, or come to you because they don't know what they want. What do you what do you find is the 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 split there? both really? Okay. Uh, yeah. I have some clients who are like, this is what I like, these are the colors I like, this is the style I like. And, you know, sometimes I always with my clients I joke. I'll send them like options. I always like to throw in a wild card. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so if it's something they have it, I'll just be like, this is a wild card. Just, you know, yeah. Check it out. Try it out. Um, but then I have some clients who are just clueless and that's okay. And they're just yeah. open to anything. So that's fun too. Too. That would be fun. That that's you get to be kind of the artist in that regard, and you get to give a lot of different fun, quirky ideas they would never have thought about. That'd be awesome. Yeah. I, I, I sometimes I think when you throw that wild card, and I think it would be interesting to see, at least for me, sometimes people don't know what they want until they see it. And sometimes I would imagine right. do, do you find that sometimes that wild card does get picked? Yes. Really? And that's why I like throwing it in there. Because yes. <laughs> you don't. I mean, sometimes. And a lot of people say like, oh, yeah, I never would have thought that with that and this with that. And it's so it's like, OK, so you broaden their fashion perspective, right? Yeah, there. that's and yeah. that's part of your teaching them and training them, too, so that they can see what works well together as well. I, 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 I that's what I would imagine that you're yeah, you're empowering them. They're making them feel confident. And that's part of the power of clothes. What with regards to you, you, I, I love that you offer a list for your readers of the essential items. What are some of the, the, the essential items that all women should have in their wardrobe? Definitely, you know, little black dress, or if you're not, I mean, not every woman loves wearing a dress, right. a pantsuit, yeah. because if you're, you know, even if you don't have a very social life or you're not going, you will, whether it's for work or something, there will always be that occasion that you will feel like that special occasion that you will feel like, oh my God, I'm nothing to wear. <laughs> you know? Yes. Oh, yes. And it's just easy Been to there. slip on that black dress or put on that black suit and accessorize it. Just always have that in the back of your closet. And actually, also, not to sound, you know, grim, but funerals. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. I feel like, you know, as we get older, you're going to, I, this happened to me. I didn't even have something black oh. <laughs> being the New Yorker that I am. Um, <laughs> you bring, that's I okay. Was, oh you have God, the color. I you're colorful. have like an appropriate black funeral dress. Uh-huh. Is <laughs> so that happened to me a few years ago. So I've learned, I've always like kept that in the back of my mind. Cause really, when do you think of that? You don't, you, and you don't want to think about it. Right. But right. when you do that, have that, you want to, as you said, make sure you feel good and feel like you're being respectful. So it's nice to know that fail safe is there. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. I have a question. You said, um, oh, what is it that you said? Oh, not everyone woman, woman likes to wear a dress. What about a pantsuit? What are your thoughts on a jumpsuits? <gasps> love them. Oh, love them. And I love that they're, I mean, they're huge right now. They huge. are. Even in bridal. I don't know if you oh, noticed. Oh, I did not notice. Huge. Oh. I mean, they're huge. I mean, the bridal market's like exploding with designers and 
such great talent, but like every, so bridal market happens twice a year. It's like, well, now they've stopped calling it bridal. It's basically like bridal fashion week. Um, I'm sure you've seen it on Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. I see you on Instagram with your pics. (laughs) I love them. They're gorgeous. Yeah. Um, so yeah, every literally the past couple, I would say the past two or three seasons, Mm -hmm. every designer has had a jumpsuit in their collection. Or bridal. So, okay. I, I always get some readers saying, wait a second. I'm not as tall as you, Shannon. I can't wear a jumpsuit. My question to you, you're the stylist. Who can wear mm-hmm. them? How do they wear them? What should they look for? Look, so, yes. I mean, it does benefit if you are tall. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, but also, listen, everyone should have a good tailor or seamstress. Ah. You know? So, try. I say try it. Oh, you don't know until you try it on. Okay. And, you know, there's a lot. Of, also, with shorter people, maybe it's summer okay. jumpsuits. You know, you want to do the shorts instead. Uh, those are cute. Those little rompers. Yeah. Like, with like, like rompers or heels. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Well, it's so easy to get dressed. It's so easy to get dressed when you have a yeah. jumpsuit. It's like one thing. I'm done. Put some shoes on, a little accessories. I'm out the door. Right. And so sleek, tailored. Mm-hmm. Like, you look great. <laughs> yeah. It hangs well. Yeah. They hang well. And they just... I, I, that's what I love about them. It's one decision and then they hang well. I've worn them to school and layered them. I've worn them obviously in the summer with or without a jacket. I, I love them. I'm a huge fan. I hope they stay in fashion a long time. So <laughs> I think they will. I hope so. I think they will. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of summer, the season. So you have fall and winter season and then you have your spring and summer. How should, or what are the key rules, I guess I should say, to picking the items for each of those capsule wardrobes? How do you advise your clients? Um, Obviously, you're going to be helping them pick those items out, but what are you saying to look for? So for each client, it depends on one, their lifestyle, Mm -hmm. like their everyday. Um, Also to where they live, their climate, right? So you have New Yorkers who we have both extremes. Yeah. (laughs) Yes, you do. So we need, you know, options. But then you have some clients who, like I just finished with a client who lives in Florida and she, you know, spring, summer straight, maybe with a little like cute sweater, cute blazer here and there, but she probably won't get as much uses out of her spring and summer. So those are the pieces I advise her to really invest in because those are the ones she's going to wear the most, use the most and whatnot. Makes sense. Um, makes yeah. Sense. But yeah, I think really it boils down to every client's lifestyle and where they live. Lifestyle and climate. That makes sense. Yeah. I The, the one part that it seems, oh, how should I say this? Uh, with regards to coloring, some people know their coloring. Some people don't. Are there certain colors that will look good? Like you said, black dress on anyone um, or certain prints that will look good on anyone that you say, don't worry about it. If, if it fits you, what, is there anything like that? Like a fail safe? A fail, I, for, I had a client who was a redhead okay. and gorgeous. And her, I would constantly say this while I was working with her and we were putting together her wardrobe. I was like, navy is your black. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm that like, you can name, like gorgeous. navy blue looks gorgeous. And like, pa- as, as would black do on us. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And I was just like, navy is your black. I'm like, Kathleen, oh. keep <laughs> That makes always sense. opt for navy instead of so i would say to all the redheads out there navy is your black navy is your black <laughs> and it would be seasonless wouldn't it couldn't you use that yeah, in winter it, exactly. and summer uh, that would be yeah. oh. and it's everywhere navy is i i i, I love I, navy i love navy too mm, i love <laughs> navy that's one thing i have a little too much is there such a thing but i have too much of it probably in my closet <laughs> I know same here and stripes, right? I think oh, it might be the New England in me. <laughs> probably. Well, you know, yeah. I was gonna say. Speaking of that francophile hint, I uh, yeah. yeah, stripes. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, a ton of them. <laughs> so with regards to summer. I'm seeing a lot of interesting trends this summer that are very prevalent. The cut out shoulder uh, or yeah. the off the shoulder and all sorts of other things. What are you, what are some of the, the summer trends that we should put in our closet and which ones maybe should we invest in because they may be around for a while or which ones should we save on? What, what are you enjoying? What are you watching out there? Okay. I'm really enjoying the off the shoulder mm-hmm. shirts with the ruffles. I don't cut outs. Okay. Here or there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, but I think the off the shoulder with, you know, the top is the ruffle is everywhere and different variations of it are everywhere. Uh And that to me is just like a classic summer, like you're about to hop on somebody's boat. Yeah. (laughs) Look. So I would definitely invest. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, yeah, it's classic and I would invest the other trend I'm seeing, which is fun Uh and 
but I would save on uh-huh. would be pom poms. They're everywhere. Yes, that's so true. <laughs> they are. I was just looking at actually a pair of shoes. Yeah, had them. I was yes. like, huh? Abs- yes, I think they're fun. I think they're great. But I, I feel like this time next year we're going to be sick of them. That's true. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to be like cutting those puppies off. and like, Yeah, uh, I would save on that. I would go for the lower end option, have fun with it, wear them out. But I feel like this time next year, we're going to be so sick of seeing them because they're everywhere. Do you see? I mean, I'm seeing here in the city now, you know, the people have them attached to their bags. Like There's pom-poms bags. this, pom-pom. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, on the fringe of the maxi dress or whatnot. I've seen that. Who, who I saw some dress recently of those on the on their maxi dress. I'm like, okay. There's a lot of movement on that thing. <laughs> I, but yeah, like you said, it's fun, it's playful, it makes you smile, and that's what summer is about. I, that's why I like summer. I don't tend to spend a ton of money uh, unless it's for special occasion or for investment pieces. But summer mm-hmm. can be fun. Summer can be a yes. lot of fun. That's what Absolutely. I do like about it. Uh, so you're in New York City. You've been there for quite some time. You know designers, new and established. Which ones do you gravitate towards? Which ones do you feel know how to dress the the women of today that are busy but want to remain stylish and stay you know in you know in vogue basically who do you look to yeah i i mean she's been you know all about the working women for since she came out as diane von Furstberg. can't go wrong with a wrap dress so true easy yeah easy effortless um who uh, again for my non for my ladies who don't like dresses. Uh, I love Ralph Lauren, Ooh. tailored, sleek. Again, all his stuff is timeless. As for new, who is, I feel like there's a shift in our, you know, working life. I feel like, you know, our generation is very, we're very health conscious. Mm-hmm. We're very busy, we, but also we want to be comfortable, right? With this right. whole athleisure yes. uh, movement that's happened. Huge. So one that I've been keeping my eye on is, I don't know if you've heard about them. They're called Kit and Ace. I have not. Tell me more. Oh, okay. So they, so funny, the founders of Kit and Ace, this is a Canadian brand. They invent, they were the founders of Lululemon before they they, sold. So they've noticed with, you know, Lulu, they invented Lululemon and hello, their products are amazing. Yes. That people just right, people just started wearing them every oh day. I, like, I <laughs> live in them more than I've ever lived in them in my life here in bed. It's not even... <laughs> exactly. As much as I hate to admit it, it's like okay, but they I'm look going good. To... They're, be- they're yeah. beautiful. And I'm They're going stylish. To yoga after work. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, not out um, on a date, but definitely around yeah. town doing errands. <laughs> right. Exactly. Like Saturday, Saturday morning. That's my attire. But I mean, I think what we saw with this whole movie was like people were just really wearing like yoga pants to work and. And it's just become taboo, right? So yeah. now all the tweens here in New York City are all about Lululemon. Oh, Where, wow. <laughs> as the down. older women now, they're like, no, my daughter wants to wear Lululemon. <laughs> Absolutely not. There's got to be a divide um, here. <laughs> yeah. So the founders of Lululemon, are they started Kit and Ace. So it's, uh-huh. it's very small. If you go onto their website, they just opened up a shop, a very small shop in Soho. Uh-huh. But what it is, is actual pants, shirts that you can wear to work. The fabrics are amazing. You're comfortable. So I think that's where, you know, if designers are shifting towards, because they know we need to look presentable because wearing yoga pants work is not okay. (laughs) Um, But also they know, like, we want to feel comfortable. Hence why people were wearing their Lululemon, like Monday through (laughs) Sunday. (laughs) They tapped into something. Yeah. They they definitely spoke to something in that, that culture, our culture. Yeah. So it's, I mean, I went to their Soho shop a couple months ago and it's, oh my God, the fabrics are amazing. Okay. I will, <laughs> um, oh, interesting. I will put a link to them on today's show notes for anyone who doesn't live in New York City or in Canada. I'm assuming, do they have a shop? I'm assuming in somewhere in one of the provinces or? Me, I don't know, but you can definitely order online. Okay. Again, their collection, I think, because they're, you know, they're just starting out, they're seeing where this is going. Sure. It's not big. I would love to see them go more you know, variety, but again, you can get the basics, pants, shirts, skirts, you know, they have some, like they have like a sleeveless blazer and like a trendy with like a leather belt or something, you know, you can get some trendy pieces, but again, it's like great fabrics. You, you look good and you also feel comfortable. And I think that's where, 
you know, the shift in fashion is going to go. That's the overlap. That, yeah, I think you're right. And like you said, I think part of it is we have in, in, in our generation, in the X generation, but I think just in all generations now we're just more aware, we're more uh, know with regards to health, we're active, we're trying to be, you know, mm-hmm. stay as busy and as active as we can. And if we can make that transition as seamlessly as possible with our clothing, it makes that much more uh, accessible to go, oh, I'm going to go for a walk after work or I'm going to go before work and then I don't have to change into too much of a, yeah. Yeah, so they know, like, we, yeah, we live busy lives now. It's like we're here, there, and everywhere. (laughs) Exactly. Well, speaking of busy lives, you led perfectly into the next question. I know that you are very busy, lovely lady. (laughs) And I want to know what... You're trying to build the life that you want. You, We're all trying to. We're also trying to make a ton of decisions. We're trying to navigate all these different things. But at the same time, I know you. You are... You do not follow the crowd. You live your own life by your own rules. What what guiding principles do you live by? If if you don't mind me asking, speak. As, no, not at I know all. we've had this conversation off air many many times, and I love our conversations. Yes, <laughs> I love our I love our life chats. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they're great. Whatever you'd like to share, I, I would love to have it, readers hear a tidbit of this because you are doing so well in New York, and you continue to be my inspiration um, oh, for living oh. life the way you want to live it, um, and not following following society's dictates. What are some guiding principles? I think. Um, I don't know. Well, I know I've thought a lot about this question. <laughs> it's, like, it's a heavy, Deep. loaded one. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't know if it's so much, you know, you and me are the same. Like we love our books. We love our like self-help books. Yes. Love- <laughs> yeah. Um, Trying to always learn and grow. Yes. And I think, I mean, you don't, nobody moves to New York City to take it easy, right? That's like true. we all, everybody here has a dream, has a mission. Like they, they want to better themselves. So there's no slacking off in this city. So I think what helps me be, you know, always inspire me to pursue what I want to pursue is seeing others around me doing the same thing. That's the majority here, right? Everybody's trying to be the best person they can be here and push themselves. Like most of my friends, I mean, all of my friends, we're all, you know, whatever we're pursuing, we're at it 110%. I think another part is I just, I mean, I've just always been this kind of person since I was little. If there's something I wanted to do, I'd figure it out. Yeah. Nothing, you know, was going to stop me. You're a go-getter. Yeah, yeah. I am. I, I mean, I remember awesome. when I, I was a dancer, so I was at a dancing school and I wanted to learn how to do, I would see the girls at competition do fuerte turns, which is like when your legs would like, oh, <laughs> I, can't, I can't do it. Over, yeah. <laughs> But I remember I videotaped a competition and I watched the girl do it over and over. And then I taught myself. I mean, granted, my technique was probably a little off. But (laughs) But that took self-discipline at that young age. Oh, my gosh. Right. And I yeah. Yeah. So I think part of it's like my personality, but a lot of it, too, which keeps me going is being surrounded in a city where everybody is pursuing what they want to pursue. So they give you a lot of energy or motivation. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This city. Yeah. You, there's no slack enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's electric. I always tell people who have never been, you put your foot down in New York City and you just you can just feel the energy. It is. I don't yeah. even know how to explain I've had, that. Yeah. I've had friends now who have left the city and they're like, they're like, oh, we miss it. That mm-hmm. energy. Like you take sometimes I take it for granted and then I leave and then I'm like, oh, OK. <laughs> Okay, I see what they're talking about. It's true. It's true. And like you said, it's people come there to achieve something or to to accomplish something or to grow in some way or to, yeah. Yeah, to better themselves. They're not going there to retire, um, which, and there are great no. places out there to retire, but New York City is not one of them. Um, no, not at all. It's so funny. This past weekend, I was in Florida visiting my grandmother for her 95th birthday. Okay. And I, yeah, just being there for the weekend and just being like, wow, <laughs> people just... <laughs> People just relax. (laughs) Well, the thing is, do you think people have periods in their lives or do you think you will always, I mean, I know we can't foretell the future, but do you think there's waves and ebbs and flows in life? Or do you think that is something that's always going to, you're always going to have to have that kind of energy in the town that where you live or city where you live? I know. No. Yeah. I think about it all the, all the time, especially as I get older and stuff. It's like, oh, you know, am I going to stay here? And also, I, you know, I grew up in Massachusetts, so I go there often and it's nice on weekends. My family's there and it's like, oh, can I see myself moving back here? But then I always be like, well, 
I always got to keep my apartment in the city. Yeah. <laughs> like I need, yeah. I need that outlet. Like, I don't know. I don't know. What's a balance? So that, that, well, then you've learned that about yourself. That's the yes. key, I think too. You know what balance you need and everyone's different. And that's the key is finding that out. How, how did you, okay, here's another question for you. So I would say my twenties were a huge time for me to figure out what I liked, what I didn't like, what I could put up with, what I couldn't put up with. And even to the first part of my thirties, yes. what, well, yeah. How was that experience for you as far as what, what advice, I guess, let's go there. What advice would you give someone who's maybe in their twenties, who's that doesn't feel like they've figured out their life path or where they want to go. What would be your advice to a 20 year old? My advice would be to pursue whatever they're interested in, even if it was multiple things. I would say pursue all of it because that's exactly what I did in my 20s. And I think, you know, as you get older, you start weeding out like with the whole dance thing. It was so funny. If you had asked me when I graduated high school and college, like my whole plan in 2005 was I'm going to move to New York, get my master's in childhood and special education. Because, you know, my mom was always like, you need to have an education, Tiffany, just in case dance doesn't work out. But I was like, okay, I'll do that. And then I'll audition for Broadway. And then I'll move back home. And I've always had like an entrepreneur type spirit. And I was like, I'll move back home and open up my own dance studio. That's <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you oh had my, a vision. So, you had a vision. Yeah, yeah. But it's so funny because 10 years ago, I really thought like that is exactly what I'm going to do. But it had I not pursued, again, had I not moved to New York to pursue all that, I would have never realized that like, no. <laughs> the answers wouldn't you know, come like, to I you, I don't right? want to dance on Broadway. But I had to, you know, actively pursue it to realize that that wasn't something I didn't want. Right. And I think that is like the biggest and it was so reassuring too, because it's not like, oh, I came to New York. I didn't like, I didn't fulfill my dream of dancing on Broadway. Right. It was like, no, I actually pursued my dream. And I realized that I didn't want it. That's right. just as fulfilling to me as, you know, had I danced on Broadway and been miserable. That makes sense. Um, the answer, yeah. And the also I wouldn't came. be doing what I'm doing now. Like I wouldn't have realized that this whole other career option was available to me. Right. And that, and that took time to develop too. And then your family yeah. probably recognized it and told that to you, share that with you as well. And you're like, Oh yeah. I, I always say if one keeps searching for the answers, as long as you keep searching, as long as you keep searching, mm-hmm. they will come. You don't know when, you don't know what the answer is going to be, but as long as you keep searching and, and your pursuit of that first dream, which evolved into something else is exactly uh, a testament to that based on, you know, what you're doing now, I think. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, that's great advice. Whole yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. Well, and I, I want to talk really quickly about the busy part of being a professional entrepreneur, as you said, and, and you know, you are the one man show in your business. So how do you balance your life? Um, you have a personal life and you have your professional life. How do you make sure you are, you know, sane in both of those and content as well? Yes. I mean, it's, you learn every day, <laughs> um, but yeah, I think, yeah, with experience you learn, um, as an entrepreneur, I learned to really like trust my instincts, right. trust my gut, you know, sometimes clients are not a good fit mm-hmm. or opportunities are not, you know, especially when you're first starting out, you always want to say yes, yes to everything. Mm-hmm. And sometimes like, oh, there's been times where I've said yes. And I, you know, taken on a project, taken on a client and I didn't listen to my gut or my instinct oh. and it didn't end up good, being a good fit. It was more of a hassle than what it were, was worth. So I feel like now that I'm a little seasoned, yeah. I can you, well, you, you learn that out. lesson and you can now trust that gut. You were right. Yes, if exactly. Else, it told you that, yeah, your, your gut was dead on. Um, yeah, I think. And also to be an entrepreneur, you, you have to be extremely organized. Okay. Which I am. You are. <laughs> a little... OCD, not OCD, but yeah. I think there's a, such a be, thing if you're your own business. If you're the only person in a business, my goodness. Yeah, you have to be, you have to you be. Have to be on top of things, you organized, have. which has always been my strong suit. But I think, you know, this past couple of months, it's so funny. I've, I've kind of slipped. I've always been yoga, Pilates, ballet classes. And I've kind of let that slip, you know, because easily, like life can easily take over. So I think this summer, I'm really focusing on making you know, my yoga, my Pilates, my ballet classes, you know, putting them in my agenda before everything else. More Cause it's priority. easy for something, you know, whether it's your social life or something else to slip aside. It's, it is, it is, especially if you love what you're doing. Mm-hmm. That's what I found was interesting. Um, 
for me, and sometimes I get so engrossed when I'm doing it, I forget, oh, yeah, Shannon, you might want to start, you know, investing in a social life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I always say I hibernate, like, in the winter. <laughs> well, yeah, you're exhausted, too. I mean, that's the thing. You're tired, and you are working your tail off. Um, but, yeah, that's when the balance. But at least we rec- – you, you know, you – with regards to your shifting of plans this summer, you recognize that you're listening to yourself. Um, yes. And see, like you said, seasons, like life comes in seasons. I know that, you know, fall and spring or, you know, that's when everybody wants to get it together. <laughs> so that's like <laughs> my, my busy season. And then, you know, summer kind of weans off, but then again, like August will pick up. So yeah, I've, I've gotten better about keeping, again, I'm very organized with a calendar, a monthly calendar, and literally months in advance, just taking like washi tape and just putting washi tape through a week and just being like, okay, this is me time. Like I need to take a break. Oh, good for you. Yeah. So I've gotten good with that. That's important. I think the me time is absolutely important and to not feel guilty about it. Right. I'm, absolutely. It you need while, that time. But I am not, I don't feel guilty about going to get my, my seasonal facial or, you know, taking that walk um, and say, no, I can't do this right now. The boys need a walk. I need a walk more importantly. Yeah, absolutely. Because it makes us a better person or better entrepreneur or a better, you know, whatever we are involved with. I absolutely agree. I have one more question about fashion and then I have a lot of lovely little rapid fire questions. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Okay. So how, so we're just talking about style and people get serious about it in spring and fall. How does fashion or style play a role in each of our lives? We were talking about how it empowers us, but let's, how should we then approach it and what specifically can paying attention to our style do for our lives, help to improve it or, or how much, I guess I'll tell you take that where you want to take it. (laughs) <laughs> okay. I think, yeah, I think it does style. It's like choosing what you're going to eat, right? Oh. It either affects you, you know, either enhances you or, you know, makes you sluggish with clothing. The same thing, either you feel great or it's just like, blah. And listen, we have to all get dressed every day. So you might as well love <laughs> when you open up your closet, love what you're putting on yourself, love the person you're presenting. And it's, it's really, I, it's, sounds so superficial, but really people do judge a book by their cover. And that's not to say like, you need to go out. You know, I really hate how fashion is marketed, you know, like you need to wear this designer and that designer. And it's like, no, at the end of the day, you need to wear whatever designer looks best on you or whatever company. And also whichever company and designer fits your lifestyle. And yeah, I, I mean, I think that people get a lot of turned off by fashion and style because it is projected in the media and the market is so superficial. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's like, no, 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 no. You, we all have to get dressed in the morning. So why not love what you're wearing? And also I think too, shopping smarter, just, you know, yeah. you don't have to follow the trends. You don't, I think a lot of things too, when people work with me and my clients is like, I said to one, I was like, listen, you, we did our whole fall and spring wardrobe. We worked together for like six months. And I was like, I, you do not need to call me for another five years. <laughs> like, said, you laid the job, groundwork for her. Yeah. My job here is done. You right. do not need to call. And that's, you know, <laughs> that's the purpose of it. It's like, I want to teach my clients how to shop smarter. The pieces they are buying with me, they're going to have at least for the next, they're going to be have and wear for the next five years. That's fantastic. That's so, be yeah, a good feeling I know. for your clients. I would imagine. Yeah. And also it's funny because people think of me as a stylist, like I want this, you know, excessive fashion and I am like the total opposite. (laughs) You're a quality over quantity girl. I know uh, you. you, Yes. you. (laughs) That's my mantra. (laughs) It is. And you, and I, I have to share with listeners. I remember, I mean, each of the times we've met, I am always absolutely inspired by your outfits. And there's one that I remember, I don't know if I've ever told you this, when we met, we met at Bellman, (laughs) it was Bellman's bar, I believe. And you had the most lovely white, I think it was an eyelet dress, A-line dress, and you had a simple but well-tailored uh, khaki trench coat. And you just look stunning. And it, like you said, it's not about the labels. It's tailoring. It's what works for people. And you just look fantastic. I still remember that evening. That was fantastic. Oh the God, jazz I'm in the so background, flattered. your outfit. <laughs> but I mean, I just want to give them a taste of... Of you, your how you dress because I think that too exemplifies how they will look, but also feel. Um, and it's timeless. It's quality over quantity. Oh my! Yep, that is my mantra. <laughs> 
that. Yes, exactly. Oh, exactly. Cool. I am so excited for people to get to know you a little bit more and see what you can do for them. But I have, let's get the, I'm going to have them get to know you a little more on a personal level with some rapid fire questions. Um, okay. <laughs> so great. here we go. Um, I'll just give you two options about, and you'll just say, boom, boom, boom. And this is my inspiration, just to be honest and to be fair, is have you ever seen the 73 questions that Vogue, well, I don't know if they do it anymore. Oh, yes, I did. I did. Yep. I love, I love that. And then my favorite, of course, and this is no surprise, was Sarah Jessica's. And, yeah. <laughs> follow her through the house and she just rattles them off but yeah. i'm like trying to f- see her house at the same time as i'm listening yes. to her answers <laughs> so that's my inspiration for this <laughs> to be fair i did I not it. create this i love it <laughs> okay here we go wine or cocktails wine oh yes <laughs> theater or live concert definitely theater I guess I should ask musical or, um, or stage production. Uh, I, that's, that'd be better. Quite. Oh, is it called? Stage oh, production? musical, total musical. musical. I, I want the costuming, the singing, the dancing. <laughs> <laughs> favorite book. Oh, favorite book. So I actually just read this one. I put it on my Instagram. It's amazing. I want to buy a copy for every woman in my mm. life. I actually just gave my sister my copy of this past weekend. It's called The Woman I Wanted to Be, and oh. it's by Diane von Furstenberg. And it is the most empowering, inspiration, like amazing. She oh. has lived a fantastic life, but her message throughout that book you after you're done reading that book, you will feel like you could do anything. Mm, okay, I will put a link, guys, on, oh, on the yes. show notes for that. Have book, you read that yet? I'm I have it on my wish. It. I know oh. I had it on my wish list. I do want to read it. I love her. It's, Absolutely it's, adore her. It's great. Thanks for reminding me, and I will yeah. put that a link on the show notes for everybody. Um, all right, next one. Next book you want to read but haven't read yet. Oh, so funny. So this. <laughs> Okay. And in the summertime, I like to read a lot of books. So I'm excited to hear what you have. um, Light reads. I love my, you know, beach reads. I also, so this book has been on my list since last summer. But, you know, during the year, I'm busy and I love reading a lot of like entrepreneurs, self help books, you know, while, and then summer, I just like to let loose. So the next (laughs) book I want to read, which I actually just started yesterday on the plane. Oh. It's called The Primates of Park Avenue. Ooh, <laughs> I don't know fun. if you've heard of that. I've heard it of it. Like a, it is a juicy little, so it's a, anthro, <laughs> it's a memoir oh, it is? of an oh, anthropologist it is. who lived on the Upper East Side. Oh, it and it just talks about the whole, it, we always say, like all New Yorkers say, like the Upper East Side is like a whole other <laughs> <laughs> species. I've heard. <laughs> and yeah, it is juicy. I'm already a hundred page, hate pages in. It's like a guilty read. It's like watching The Housewives. That's what you <laughs> said. Per- exactly. And it's not like you just said what summer is all about. That's what summer is all about. Yeah. It's like those- so, it, but it's fascinating because she's an anthropologist with a PhD from Columbia, mm. and she's you know talking about some of the most trivial things and. Com- but comparing it to like how animals are in nature, mm. and it's so it's it's hilarious and disgusting at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> that does sound interesting. I didn't realize it was a memoir. I didn't. Okay. I was thinking it was fiction. Yes. Ooh. So yeah, she, she was originally from Michigan, the author, um, but you know, moved to the city to pursue her dreams, yeah. met a husband, they lived downtown, then they moved up to, it's fascinating okay. it, for people who like that, you know, outsider look of New York. It's, it's really interesting. Oh, it does sound interesting. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that review of, I mean, the, 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 what did I say? The summary of it, I guess you could say. I'm curious now. That, that sounds oh yeah. Uh, there's, there's a lot of juicy tidbits in there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, latest movie that moved you. Oh, it's just, a, it's so funny. All these happen to be fashion related. Um, I saw the documentary, the first Monday in May, <gasps> which is, yeah, I you told think? you that is behind the scenes of the Met Gala last year behind the looking glass. Okay. And it shows not only like Anna Wintour, who's in charge of putting the Met Gala together and how that all operates, but it also shows the artistic director putting the um, exhibition together. And it's Ooh. amazing. It takes like a year that I found fascinating. That yes, the whole Met Gala tidbits behind the scenes are fascinating too. But just to see how this, how the gala exhibit, um, the Met fashion exhibit comes together is it's amazing. That would be amazing. I, I that that moved me. You would love it. You need to, that. Those last exhibitions year was the are chi- so behind fantastic. the looking glass China. Oh, it was China. That's right. Yeah. So That's it shows right. them flying to China and like the people. Oh it's God. amazing the pieces they got. Ugh. Oh. 
They do like a the great details. Job. Oh, amazing. Amazing. Uh, they, okay. Yeah. I have that on my, I think it's, it's not on Netflix. I have it mar- a bookmark somewhere. Cause I was like, yes, you need to start watching this one. Cause that came out just the first of May, just as the title says, right. Right. When the gala actually happens. Yeah. I think. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, best life advice ever received. Oh, that was a tough one to think of. You know what? So this much. actually okay. I saw in your newsletter. I think <laughs> life advice to sum it up is you know you put the quote, remember the quote, be happy for what you oh. have now because it was once what you wanted. Yeah. Oh, and I was yeah. like, oh my goodness. I feel like, especially for me, and I'm sure everybody, it's like we're always on to the next thing, right? Yeah. When was the last time you like sat down and was like, oh my God, this is amazing. Look this is exact like a year ago this is what I wanted and I have it. And it sometimes it takes for my friends <laughs> to point <laughs> that out to me. But then I read that and one of your newsletters, I was like, that is so spot on. Yeah. That's a good take a breath moment. Put, yes. put things into perspective or at least to check yourself. Yeah. That's a good reminder. Spring or fall. Both. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Selfie's choice. Can't make a decision. I totally get it. That's, that's fair. <laughs> I know both <laughs> New York City or Paris. Uh, again, both. <laughs> just split your time. You just split your time 50 50. Yeah. Six yeah. months here, six months there. Coffee or tea? I was curious about this one. Oh, definitely tea. I cannot. I love the smell of coffee, mm-hmm. but nope. I'm a tea girl all the way. <laughs> <laughs> who would you like to have coffee or, or tea with? In this case, it'd be tea. Who would you like to have tea with? Okay. So the first person who came to my mind is Tina Fey, which Ooh. is so funny. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. Oh my gosh, she'd be fantastic. Have you seen the interview with her and Jerry Seinfeld and riding in cars with comedians or whatever? I love watching oh, her in an interview. That's... You would love it. She's fantastic think, in yeah. it. It's online know, something... somewhere. Yeah, her. I have her um, memoir to read too this summer. That's on my list. Um, but something about her, I think she's very she's very business savvy, but she's also, I love her her personality like her sense of humor That's maybe funny. it's like i see a little bit of myself in her like she doesn't take <laughs> things too seriously you but know but smart. at the same time she's like a go-getter she's driven but she knows how to you know laugh at herself that's a good point that's a good yeah point. i can see why you'd want to have tea with her absolutely <laughs> <laughs> what historical figure would you like to have tea with oh audrey hepburn oh, yeah. all the way yeah, classic what what is your best way to relax in your everyday routine Oh, so every day when I wake up, I go right to my tea kettle, (laughs) turn it on, and I have jasmine loose leaf tea. That is like my everyday luxury. (laughs) Oh, that sounds lovely. No, that sounds lovely. And isn't it fun to, I look forward to those moments. Do you just simply look forward to that when you wake up? Yeah, absolutely. I put on my cozy robe. (laughs) Yeah. Oh my gosh. We're, we are, yeah, that's similar to, yeah, totally, absolutely. I know. You. Scary how similar we are. <laughs> <laughs> We're like the opposite coast. I know. East and West. Okay. Last one. What is your mantra? What drives you? What helps motivate you? What's your mantra? Uh, quality over quantity. <laughs> Less is more in all aspects of your life. Well, that's- you know, quality people, quality mm. things, like yeah, quality. Quality. It's a good last thought to end on. Tiffany, thank you so much for stopping by the podcast today. All the way from New York City, Style by Tiffany. Thanks, Shannon. My pleasure. (laughs) Have fun. (laughs) It is Tiffany's energy, her absolute love of life and enthusiasm for what she's doing that is an intoxicating and why I continue to be inspired by her. While I will provide all of the links to all the designers and books and whatnot that we mentioned in today's discussion, you can go right now to her website and her blog, Style by Tiffany, and that's Tiffany with an I dot com and learn about all the different styling services she offers. I think you're going to be impressed. She is a talent worth your investment. Go to the show notes, the simply luxurious life.com backslash podcast one eleven, and you'll find everything we talked about and so much more. But now we still have one more thing to get to. I don't worry. I did not forget. And like I said at the top of the episode, it is inspired by something that was mentioned in today's discussion. I'll be back in just a few with this week's Petit Plaisir. Welcome back. This week's Petit 
plaisir was discovered over the long weekend. As you may already know from the blog, I got out of town for the long long weekend, which is the first time I've done that in a while. As you know, I love living in Bend, and it's hard in the last uh, year since I've been a newbie here to get away uh, or want to get away, but I did, and I had a fantastic time. But what I had to do was drive eight hours both ways, and so I knew I needed some form of entertainment. And so book books on tape were my go-to. So I popped into the library and I thought the universe was trying to tell me something because not only was it in Tiffany's interview that she mentioned this book, but then I also spoke to another friend who mentioned it. And I have been told or recommended this book by numerous people in the last three or four years since the book came out in 2011. And I thought when I saw it in the library, it's about time you listen to this. You've been wanting to. Now you have some time. And I'll tell you this, this book is definitely worth listening to on audio tape versus in book form. Now, sometimes it really doesn't matter. In this case, it does. Okay, enough chat. What is the book, Shannon? The book is Bossy Pants by Tina Fey. And I know many of you have probably read it, but I don't know how many of you have listened to it on audio tape or audio files or audio CD. But let me just say, it is absolutely fantastic. I did not stop that book the entire way home. And I was laughing out loud too many times because Tina Fey is the voice that you hear. She is walking us through the book and there are a handful, if not more, additional clips that are not in the book that you get the opportunity to hear from her own lips. And as you know, no one can deliver a line quite like Tina Fey, especially if she's the one who wrote it. And since this is her book, She should be the one to read it. And it is fantastic. They've included a few clips, actual clips from SNL to remind you of a particular um, scene or sketch that she was in. And I, as many people have said, there's a ton of highlights, but one of them is her discussion about improv. And it's the idea of saying yes and. In other words, be open to life, be open to opportunity. Say yes and then contribute. Say yes and then contribute instead of automatically shutting down the the energy, the movement. Say yes and then contribute. She starts when she's very young and she leads you all the way up through her success with 30 Rock. And it is humorous. It is insightful. It is inspiring. You get to see what this woman who has accomplished so much, where she began and how she really stayed true to herself and she had a strong inner compass but at the same time she had a sense of humor and intelligence along the way i highly recommend you listen to this book and if you don't want to listen obviously read that book because it is just as inspiring but it is a hoot to hear her read it and i'll provide a link to both the the hold in your hand copy as well as the audio file for those that are interested That's Bossy Pants by Tina Fey, which came out in 2011. Yes, I know I'm a little behind the times, but still, it was worth the wait. Truly, truly worth the wait. You can find those links on the show notes, the simplyluxuriouslife.com backslash podcast 111. I hope you've enjoyed this week's Petit Plaisir, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each Monday's podcast where I'll recommend a book, a film, or a recipe, anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticated Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, stop by the blog, thesimplyluxuriouslife.com, or pick up the book, Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life, A Modern Woman's Guide. To stay caught up on the most recent podcast, blog post, and receive exclusive news, as well as an extra dose of inspiration each week, subscribe to the Simply Luxurious Life's newsletter which arrives in your inbox each Friday to enjoy with a hot cup of tea or your morning coffee just in time to jumpstart the weekend. Until next Monday, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Bonjour.